I want to make this a simple video for you to learn what kind of chocolate, cocoa, cacao, Dutch Prost, whatever kind of chocolate is for you, okay? Because they all have different properties. And a lot of times we group them all together as sort of the same thing, but they're actually quite different. And if you just have a little understanding, it's going to all make sense. So let's just jump right in. I do you want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button if you want to be subscribed to this channel where you get all kinds of low carb keto knowledge, you get all kinds of fasting knowledge, and all kinds of general health knowledge. Also hit that little bell button to turn on notifications. And then after this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market. Maybe you've heard of them before, but Thrive Market is an online grocery store. So you can get all your healthy groceries online delivered to your doorstep to save you just a ton of time. So you don't have to be going to the grocery store. But the coolest thing is I create my own grocery boxes based on my health knowledge and my own experience. So that way, if you don't want to really have to do the thinking, you just want to go to the grocery store online and get what Thomas would approve, you can do that. So check the link out down below after you go to chocolate school. All right, so first off, we have to get a little bit of a history of what happens when cocoa is harvested. Now, I'm not a chocolate expert, but I love chocolate, so I wanted to dive into the research here. So it starts with cacao pods. Okay, so there's about 50 beans in a general pod, right? What happens is they take these cacao beans and then they ferment them. Yes, believe it or not, chocolate is a fermented food, just like kimchi, just like sauerkraut. For some reason, it just doesn't end up in that category all the time, but it is fermented and has good digestive benefits. I'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so after it's fermented, then they're dried for about a week, okay? So once they're dried, then they can turn into cocoa if they're roasted at relatively high heat. So what happens is you take cocoa, which is basically just cacao that's been roasted. The reason that cacao is preferential over cocoa is simply because when you roast it, you kill off some of the antioxidant properties, kill off some of the polyphenols. More about that later. Okay, then after that, you've got the cocoa that's been roasted and that can be crunched up into nibs. Okay, you've had cocoa nibs before. All that is is cocoa that just hasn't been melted down. It's just been roasted and then crushed. Okay, now that can be ground even further into baking chocolate. Okay, maybe you've had a bar of baking chocolate. That's just tightly pressed cocoa nibs that have been crushed into a gr fine grind, like coffee grounds except cocoa grounds pressed into a bar. Okay, then what can happen is they can be melted down into a chocolate liquor. Okay, so once they're down into that melted state, they can be pressed to separate the fat out. So it's now in a liquid form and now they press it and they squeeze the fat out, which is where cocoa butter comes from. So they take the cocoa butter, you can make white chocolate, you can do all kinds of things. That's where that cocoa butter comes from. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. Then what happens is they can mix that back up. Once it's been pressed and the butter's been separated, they can mix it back in along with sugar, along with erythritol, along with other things to ultimately make the percentage. That's why when you go to the grocery store and you see, oh, it's 70% dark chocolate, 100% dark chocolate, 60%. That's how much chocolate, how much the actual cocoa mass there is versus the cocoa butter. So it's kind of interesting. And then of course, if sugar's added to it. So if you're getting anything less than 100%, it's going to probably have some sugar or something else in it, okay? So now let's get into some benefits here really quick. Minerals, this is the biggest thing for me to be completely honest. Huge sources of copper and magnesium, which are hard to get in a true, unadulterated form, particularly magnesium. That's why I'm a big fan of chocolate. Okay, but then we get on down the line, and this is what I think one of the coolest things is. The healthy fat content. I would arguably say that chocolate has the best fatty acid profile. It's a perfect mix. Okay, so the Journal of Food Chemistry actually published a study that showed that it was one-third oleic acid. That's the same fat that you're gonna find in olive oil. The same monounsaturated fatty acid that has just tremendous, tremendous health properties and antioxidant capabilities and is tremendous for a low-carb diet as they help produce ketones really fast. Then it's one-third steric acid, which is just kind of a general saturated fat, and then we have one-third palmitoleic acid, which is an omega seven fat that has tremendous published, published effects on the pancreas and beta cells, helping out with insulin resistance and helping our insulin levels in our body and our cells utilize sugar and glucose better so that we don't end up with insulin resistance. Very good stuff. Palmitoleic acid is amazing. So just a great fatty acid profile. Blood pressure helps out with blood pressure, helps out with blood flow in general, simply because the nitric oxide production that occurs. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Cardiovascular Pharmacology. They uh, gave four subjects a chocolate beverage that essentially had the amount of chocolate of two ounces, right, into a liquid form. Okay, they gave us some and they found that when they gave them, uh, put them under MRI, 
they saw a huge increase in blood flow to the brain at two hours after consumption that returned to baseline after six hours. Okay, this didn't happen in people that did not consume the cocoa beverage. So really interesting stuff. Lots of heightened cognitive function that occurs from chocolate. Okay, so then we look at the cholesterol piece, which is really awesome. Okay, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a meta-analysis, which took a look at 42 randomized controlled trials. So really powerful, uh, just buildup of different studies. And they found that it lowers LDL cholesterol and improves HDL cholesterol and also improves blood pressure. So overall vitals and lipid profile just improved dramatically when cholesterol, when, uh, excuse me, chocolate was in the equation. Okay, now let's talk about the different kinds, just so you have an understanding of what you should shop for. Okay, cacao is going to be the raw form, highest polyphenol count, highest antioxidant count. It's going to be cold pressed, so not denatured with heat. It's the rawest form and the closest to being fermented because it still has that whole fermentation process fresh in its life, I guess you could say, before it's gone through more adulteration. So very, very good if you're looking for the antioxidant kind of side of things. Then we have cocoa, which is gonna be the roasted form of cacao. Okay, fewer polyphenols, but a slightly earthier taste, slightly fudgier taste. Okay, a little bit less of the fermented benefits. Okay, then we move into the natural form, which is going to be cocoa that has been uh, pressed in a slightly different way. This is going to be where it's really sharp, it has that bitter taste, okay, but it's very high in antioxidants. Okay, very high in antioxidants simply because it hasn't been processed anymore. Now let's get into the last one here, which is Dutch processed. Okay, Dutch process is going to give it a really fudgy, smooth, just most like chocolate taste. So if you're going for an unsweetened chocolate, Dutch is gonna be the way to go as far as taste is concerned. Does have slightly less antioxidants because it is processed more. It's processed with potassium bicarbonate. So the huge benefit there is the potassium bicarbonate comes in and it gets rid of some of the acidic profile of the chocolate, making it smoother. But the other benefit is you get a load of potassium in there. It's hard to get that amount of potassium. So because it's been acted upon by the potassium, it ends up making it so it's smoother and less acidic. But as a result, you're getting good potassium into your diet too. And on a lower carb diet, this is super important for proper nerve function, for proper mood, for everything, for the sodium potassium pump within the body and that electron gradient and everything you need for good healthy energy. Uh, a couple things I want you to note though. It's okay, you should, when you look at a label for chocolate, you should see cocoa or cacao as the first ingredient, okay? Now the processing can, you can see other things. If you see potassium bicarbonate in there, it's not a preservative. That's how they process the Dutch cocoa and it's okay. Another thing, it's okay if lecithin is in there. Lecithin is an emulsifier that just makes it so that when they separate the cocoa mass and the cocoa butter, it can come back together and not separate and be really weird. Don't be afraid of lecithin, it's okay. So there's the general breakdown of chocolate. I love chocolate, I really do, and I hope you do too. I'll see you soon.